Hey, Stars fans, Dane here, editing the podcast after recording, and yet again here on YouTube, we've run into some video issues. Um, the internet here at my, my parents' house, not quite as good, and I'm a little bit farther from the router, just this is probably the best place to record, and it just happens to be the farthest from the Wi-Fi router, and so a little bit of inconsistent video on today's episode. The audio should still be pretty good. I apologize for the video quality, and it might still be an issue for the next couple of episodes this week, as I'll still be here for the next few days, but just wanted to let you guys know that I am aware of it and I'm not happy about it. And I know it might not be as enjoyable as enjoyable as an experience for you guys, but I appreciate you guys tuning in and listening and watching regardless. And not that really anyone is too nitpicky in general anyway, just wanted to again, acknowledge that I'm aware of the mistakes. Again, the audio should still be good. Good episode talking about a nice Dallas Stars win over the Predators. Let's get to it now. The Dallas Stars are 1-0 after the Christmas break as they take down their rivals, the Nashville Predators, by a score of 3-2. And on today's episode, we'll talk about this game and discuss why it's so important that the Stars picked up these two points and some other results around the Central Division, also factoring into the importance of this win. We'll talk about some of the power play struggles for the Stars, especially with that second unit. And then to close out, we'll talk about the NHL debut of Freddie Olofsson. All of this coming up on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Bing bong. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Wednesday, December 28th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener of the show, thank you for stopping by and for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. If you're watching on YouTube, please do consider hitting that subscribe button, and you can also follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. Remember that we are free and available no matter where or how you may choose to listen. Now let's jump into today's episode discussing last night's win for the Stars, 3-2, to two, a big two points picked up by Dallas in Nashville, and it was a sloppy game all around, a little bit absurd at times, but that's to be expected when you have both teams coming off of an extended break, and Dallas, I think, you know, having to swim upstream maybe a little bit more, having traveled to Nashville the morning of the game with the NHL prohibiting any sort of practice, travel, team activities, you name it, on the 24th, 25th, and 26th, so the Stars having to get up bright and early on Tuesday morning to head to the Music City, but they find a way to power through some of that weird, odd adversity, and they're able to get the win. And it's absolutely great to see the Stars leaders step up in this game, including Jamie Benn, who with his 343rd career goal now becomes the sole owner of the second spot on the Dallas Stars all-time goals list passing Brian Bellows. Now Jamie Benn only trails the greatest Dallas star of all time, Mike Madonna, who has 557 goals with the franchise. So still a lot of work to do for Jamie if he wants to be number one on the list by the end of his career. Easier said than done, but still uh, an incredible achievement from the man who has been the captain of this team for so long now and really still one of the faces of this franchise. And Rope Hints also coming up big for this team. Not quite the older veteran that you might think on this team, but he's been playing incredible all season and maybe the best month of his season has been this month of December. And that trend has continued in this game. Two goals, including one on the power play and one late in the third period to give the stars the win. And then you look at this game and there was just a lot that both teams had to put up with, including some officiating inconsistencies. You had eight calls for penalties during the first and second period combined, and then only one penalty called in the third period, really relaxed and a lot of things going uncalled that probably should have been. Uh, and then the refs just had to blow a whistle on the blatant late hit from Jeremy Lazan on Tyler Sagan that gave the stars a power play opportunity that they were not able to execute on. But still really odd that the referees were pretty aggressive with the whistles early in the game and then all of a sudden just decided to not really call anything in the third because they apparently didn't want the game to be decided by penalties. Although it seemed like up to that point, the game had already been decided by penalties with 
goals coming for the Stars on the power play, but also a goal coming for the Predators uh, shorthanded on the penalty kill. So a lot going on in this game. However, the Stars able to power through some of the absurdity and get a win. And we now tune into some audio from Coach Pete DeBoer with some insight about his team after this win. You know what? I loved our first. I thought we played uh, great coming out of the break, traveling this morning. Uh, I thought we had a great first. I thought in the second we uh, we gave the game back a little bit, um, more more with uh, puck decisions than anything. Um, and then I thought we, we recovered and reset and got our game back in the third the way we want to play. Well, he's been a leader all year for us, right from day one of training camp. Um, you know, he came in and... You know, he's led in uh, in every situation for us, and I think his game just keeps getting better and better. So nice to see coming out of the break. I thought, uh, you know, him and Joe Pavelski, two of our veteran guys, were two of our better players. That's, of course, Pete DeBoer talking about Jamie Benn, having now holding the second all-time goals position on the Stars list. Uh, great performance from him and great performance from Joe Pavelski as well. Getting a uh, Deserves a ton of credit for that final play uh, where Rope Hint scores the game-winning goal. Ben and Pavelski picking up assists there. Uh, but both teams, the Stars and the Predators, made their fair share of mistakes. Stars were unable to, were able, actually, to overcome and stave off a team that is really, at the end of the day, fighting for survival and doing not very well in terms of the standings in this division and trying to find ways to keep their head above water. And while Nashville is not necessarily a threat to the Stars right now as it pertains to playoff positioning, these two points absolutely matter for the Stars in the long run and especially as it pertains to right now in the Central Division. I mean, too many times we've seen these sloppy games that feature the Stars where they really should probably win in regulation, but they go to overtime, the Stars eventually lose, and we say, well, at least they were able to get a point. There's something that's salvaged from this game, but that doesn't happen this time around. The Stars are able to find a way to come up clutch, and it feels especially good with what, you know, a week or two ago, we see the Stars in a similar situation, giving up that late goal to the Pittsburgh Penguins, where they get no points in that matchup. It's nice to see the Stars be on the other end of that, uh, leaving, you know, the other team feeling down and getting absolutely nothing from a game that the Predators probably think they deserve some points in that game as well. But this game, Big in that regard, I think it's a big boost of confidence for the Stars moving forward that they can continue to win and find ways to get two points out of these really close, nitty-gritty games. And on a night where Winnipeg and Colorado lost in regulation, this was big for the standings, although the only negative is that Winnipeg's loss resulted in a regulation win for the Minnesota Wild, who were still a good ways out from the Stars. So even with a potential Wild win, on Thursday, they would not surpass the Stars in the standings, but now there's five points of separation between the Stars and the Jets, and then of course Colorado, who I think is starting to slowly but surely get better and healthier, they lose to the Arizona Coyotes by a score of 6-3, to three. so a big night all around for the Stars, really the best case scenario, you don't necessarily want to see the, the, the Minnesota Wild get a win, but if it means the Jets losing and the Jets not being as close to the Stars in the standings, you certainly can live with that. And of course, it's going to be a big game on Thursday. If the Stars can get two points there against the Wild, that will do even more for them in terms of growing that lead in the Central Division. And you don't necessarily ex expect a game like this to be perfect for the Stars again. Coming off Christmas break, having to get up early on Tuesday morning and fly to Nashville, you expect there to be some sloppiness, you expect there to be some turnovers and some mistakes, which we did see a fair share of that, but I think that they did a really great job and showed some mental and physical toughness by getting this win and gutting a, a nice game out against a division rival. And although it might not have mattered too much in the standings for the Predators long term, uh, the Stars, I think, have to be happy with their performance overall and pretty pleased to be moving on with two points, looking to close out this road trip uh, in the best way possible. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and hockey. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. Thank you again for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. 
We're continuing to talk about last night's win that the Stars picked up against the Nashville Predators. And while it was great to see them get two points, this game did have its share of woes and mistakes from the team wearing white and green. And one of those came on the power play. The Stars had another down night on the man advantage, only going one for six. They also allow a shorthanded goal to the Nashville Predators that allowed them to tie the game back up and really give them some momentum in that second period. You heard earlier Coach DeBoer say that he thought that they kind of allowed Nashville to take over the game a little bit in that second frame. But, I mean, at the end of the day, the Stars did score a power play goal and it ended up being a pretty pivotal one at that, uh, giving the team the lead for another brief moment after the Predators had scored their first goal of the game. Philip Forsberg getting a nice rebound look there. So, I mean, not a complete disaster from the power play. At the end of the day, the top unit is doing well. I think that they're fine, although you'd like to see them execute a little bit more on their opportunities. And I think just with continued time that they will do that. And maybe this was just an off night for them. Where the problems start to arise is with the second power play unit. And I think that there are a few contributing factors and reasons for that. And one of those, there is a little bit more youth on that unit with Wyatt Johnston and more recently, Niels Lundquist, who is kind of being swapped in and out with Ryan Suter. I I know that Ryan Suter is older, but I just think that Niels Lundquist is a better option right there just with his youthfulness and speed. I know it's a lot of pressure to be quarterbacking a power play in the NHL, but I mean, what Niels Lundquist, excuse me, has to find a way to continue to learn and grow. And I think that that is a great opportunity for him. Is he going to make mistakes? Yeah, it's going to happen. He's going to come up short every now and again. But I think that the bad that Niels Lundquist could potentially do at times on the power play would be less than what we might see from Ryan Suter. Ryan Suter unable to make the play to prevent the shorthanded goal from the Nashville Predators in last night's game. So I'd really like to see more Lundquist and less Suter on that second power play unit. But I do like Wyatt Johnston. I like Tyler Sagan. I like Mason Marchment. But really, there's kind of just this dilemma of trying to find another forward to get slotted in with that group. Uh, And it's just super bizarre to see kind of what the Stars have tried to go with, to say the least. I mean, Roddick Foxa has been playing a lot on there recently in the absence of Denis Gurionov. Not necessarily the decision that I would be making, but there's probably a reason for that. And there's a reason that I'm not an NHL coach, but it just seems like a very peculiar situation to put Roddick Foxa, who's more of a a checking forward, more of a penalty killer on the power play. Not to say that guys can't do both. We see Rope Hintz play both sides. We see Tyler Sagan play and do both. But when you think Roddick Foxa, you're not necessarily thinking a threat on the power play. I, for one, would like to see a guy like Ty DeLandria get a chance on the power play. I think that he could do really well. And then, of course, once Denis Gurionov is able to come back, if and when that does happen, I think that you can slot him in there as well. And I think he gives you a little bit more of an offensive upside on that second power play unit. And so it's a little bit of a mess right now, certainly not playing at a high level, that second unit. I think that they're still working out some of the kinks and of course still growing with some of the young players in Lundquist and Johnston. I think the offense is doing really well for the Stars this season, but it could be even more deadly. I think the Stars could really take that next step forward offensively if they can find a way to get a more effective and efficient second power play unit and then also get that first power play unit to be a little bit more consistent i know that they're still trying to trend in the right direction after this this month of december has been very up and down very roller coaster ish for the stars power play as a whole and i again i think that first unit is really solid with the top line jamie ben and miro haskin but that second unit i, I mean they're that's just what tend to happen when you put your five best players all in one group you're gonna have a few holes and a few you know, inefficiencies with that second unit. So not the end of the world, not a a huge gaping issue for this team, being a little bit nitpicky, if you will, for a team that has overall been very good this season. But the Stars can find a way to get that fixed and have a deadly second power play unit. They become uh, an even greater team and an even bigger threat in the Western Conference. Well, we're going to take one more quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about the NHL debut of the newest Dallas star, Frederick Olofsson. More on that right after this. Thank you again for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Let's close out talking about Freddie Olofsson. Frederick Olofsson going by Freddie, making his NHL debut with the Dallas Stars last night. 26 years old, drafted 98th overall by the Chicago Blackhawks in the 2014 NHL draft. A a great example of sticking with it for persevering, finding a way to continue to pursue your dream. Took Olofsson a little bit longer than most 
players in the league, but he finally found a way to make it on the biggest stage in the sport. So congratulations to him, and he played a really good game. He didn't score, but he got close a few times, generated some really good looks, one in particular in the third period where he bats down a pretty weak zone exit pass from the Predators and gets a shot off, the puck wobbling on him a little bit, so it goes just wide of the cage. But, I mean, a really, really good showing from Olofsson in his first NHL game with the Stars and probably could have gotten a little bit more ice time without some of the penalties that some of the teams were racking up and coach Pete DeBoer gave a little bit of insight on that and his overall performance after the game. I thought he was good you know I, I think that's what we were looking for for a guy coming up and in the lineup is you know make it easy to play you and uh, I think that he does that he was solid defensively he created some things offensively didn't get as much ice time as I would have liked or probably deserved, but he can build on that. And, uh, you know, I, I liked his game. We've seen several different Stars rookies come in the season or young players that played a little bit last year, and they've had some flashes of good. And the verdict is obviously still out on Freddie, whether or not that he can hang long term in the NHL. But last night, I think, was certainly a great start and a good step in the right direction for Olafson and his young uh, NHL career, despite being in his mid 20s. I think he showed a lot of flashes and a lot of potential in last night's game. A great start to his career, in my opinion, all things considered, for a guy that didn't have the heaviest of expectations placed upon him, but he comes in and plays a pretty efficient game. And I'm very excited to see him match up against a stronger team in the Minnesota Wild on Thursday, as we know for sure he'll be with the team through this road trip, if not longer. I mean, after last night's game, if he continues to build on it, I, for one, would be okay with him seeing stick around a little bit longer just to see what he can continue to do. He seems like a very sharp player, an aggressive player, but, you know, in the offensive zone, being prepared to bat down that pass and get a shot on net. Not the, the flashiest player, the biggest name in the organization, but great to see a guy like Olofsson get his opportunity and put on the performance that he did on the Stars' fourth line last night. And I can't wait to see what he does next on Thursday against the Minnesota Wild. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Remember to subscribe on YouTube, follow on your favorite podcasting platform, follow on social media, at Locked on Stars on Instagram and Twitter, at Dane double underscore Lewis, my personal Twitter account. And be sure to tune in tomorrow as we'll be getting you prepared for the Stars next game against the Wild on Thursday, the last game of this brief two-game road trip and the stars heading home for a new year's eve game against the san jose sharks we'll be getting you ready for this finale of the road trip a big one against the minnesota wild two points for the stars here would go a long long way and we'll talk all about it on thursday's episode and i hope to see you there stars fans i hope you enjoy your wednesday and we'll see you back here tomorrow 